Oh, good day. My name is John, and this is another video in a series of videos I'm doing on these diesel air heaters. And the subject of today's video is the installation of a diesel air heater in a boat. Um, I've got this. This is a, uh, a copy of the the e dispatcher. This is what came in the um, the kit, but I'm actually thinking of installing this particular controller here. Um, this I find this very easy for the grandkids. They can just turn the heater on when they need it. Um, if you want more heat, you just turn it up. If you want less heat, you just turn it down. Okay, we'll um, we'll start in a second. Okay, so this is the um, the diesel heater set up in my boat. It's an old e dispatcher. Um, diesel air heater. This is installed probably 20 years ago. We've had the boat 10 years and we've been using that heater for 10 years. So the first thing you need to be aware of is that when you're putting a, a heater in a boat it needs to be installed fore and aft and as close to the center line as possible. Now these heaters can tolerate rolling movement much more so than you can tolerate pitching movement. So particularly in a sailboat, you must mount the heater fore and aft and close to the centre line. In a multi-hull or, a, or a, um, a power boat, those issues are not so critical. Now the first thing that you'll notice here on this heater is that um, it's got rubber, rubber mounts there to isolate the noise from the hull. And the other thing that is important to look at is the water trap so at the bottom of the heater you've it's got a, a right angle bend coming out of the exhaust and it's got a water trap on it with three coils of copper now this is very important to collect the condensation and also to act as a, a vapor stop for the exhaust gas coming out it's very important to have a, a drain on the lowest point of the heater because you get condensation you don't want it going back into the heater on your motorhome or caravan, all you do is drill a hole at the lowest point in the exhaust pipe. You can't do that on the boat or you get exhaust gases into the boat. Now this, this water trap acts just like a, um, a water trap in your home, you know, underneath your sink with the air spend or the toilet. And it stops the gases coming out. So the critical thing, you can make it yourself, but the top of the, the um, loop of the, the water trap has to be below the outlet um, of the of the gas there so it comes out so as the condensation comes in it, it remains in the loop and then the exhaust gas can't get into the boat this one in my boat it just drains down here so um, probably the end of um, each use it would probably get about I don't know um, a teaspoon or so or not be more than a teaspoon maybe a tablespoon of water I don't worry about it. You could drain it into the bilge or drain it into a bottle if you wanted to. I don't worry about it because the next time it will evaporate out. Now, the other thing that's important to watch on a boat is that you have proper exhaust clamps. You don't want those stainless steel worm clamps. So see here, you've got proper exhaust clamps. Now this boat, it doesn't have the um, exhaust pipe lagged it's not in an accommodation area and it's just bracketed off the hull it's worked like this very well for 20 years and um, i see no need to change it the other issue too is because the exhaust gas um, is just in this pipe it heats up this back area and evaporates any condensation that comes out of the the drain here okay so this this exhaust pipe comes up and comes up into a loop. So you have to have a, a, put it up as high as you can on the outlet to the hull, and you have to put a wave slap loop in it. So any waves that hit the side of the hull where the exhaust comes out, don't come back up and then into the heater. So this, this prevents it. Also up in here, you can see a, a curve. That's a, um, an inline muffler part that's um, probably, I don't know, 300 millimeters long. Now, the amount of condensation you get in the exhaust has no relevance to how long you run the heater. So whether you run it for one hour or five hours, the amount of condensation is purely dependent on the length of the exhaust pipe. Now, this exhaust pipe is 2.6 meters long. 
and so when the when you turn the heater off the hot gas in the exhaust pipe cools and as it cools it shrinks and it sucks in moisture or moisture laden air from the outside so the amount of condensation you get is purely dependent on the length of the exhaust pipe and the amount of moisture in the air that you get not on how long you run the heater for all right the next thing um, is the intake for the for the heat of the air intake the combustion air intake um, it just sucks it up here also from the from the lazarette and there's no issue with doing that you don't need to pull it from outside because on this particular boat it's got some good vents so up here you've got um, significant vents so it's got vents on either side that go to the outside the intake also for the uh, domestic hot air is also just pulled out of the lazarette so so here here's the outlet the exhaust outlet just comes down through here um, down through the hull and then um, underneath the bunks and everything and then into the saloon I'll show you that in a minute here we have the uh, outlet vent in the saloon um, this is about eight meters from the heater so it's on this boat it have a significant run of the uh, hot air outlet but the hot air coming out of here is still very hot the other thing that you'll need to do is you'll need to get yourself a proper marine e exhaust outlet you know they're a double skinned and insulated outlet so you don't get any um, um, hot gases or hot exhaust onto the onto the hull itself one thing you've got to be careful of and we've done it once is you don't put the fender over the heater because we've melted one of the fenders one time one winter now on the um, on the fuel side this is the um, the boats diesel tank so the the heater has its own pickup tube goes through a, an inline filter through an on off tap then there's a the little pump now if you notice the pump is suspended in space with um, rubber mounts now this is a, um, a an item that you can buy from Eber Spatcher if, if you're doing it on a boat this is so quiet my head is probably this is my bunk I've I probably my head is maybe I don't know eight to nine inches from this pump and I don't hear it when it's working oh if I hear it I, it's, it's quite enough to ignore I'll turn it on in a minute and you can hear it now on our boat the, um, the switch for the heater is on the nav station so um, there's our marine charting on the on the laptop so very simple heater yeah. and um, I like this particularly with the grandkids on board to turn it on you just turn the knob you know one two three four so we just turn it on and I always when we turn it off I always run it up onto the high setting and um, run it for you know a few minutes on the high setting before I actually turn it to naught so I'll just show you the um, the noise from the um, the fuel pump okay that's the noise from the fuel pump with the bunk up I'll show you in a minute with the bunk down and with those rubber mounts that heater is running very quiet and uh, the back of the the cabin is off I'll put the um, the back wall in and you will very you, you probably have a lot of trouble hearing that heater with the um, the back wall installed, the bunk down and the, um, the mattress on, it is very hard to hear that, uh, that ticking of that heater and it's right under this pillow and I'll have no trouble sleeping at night it's, and that is, on, that is on full power. Okay now to um, turn the heater off, I just go over the, the panel, I put it up to naught, simple as that. So for those who have an interest, um, this is our 
the ship's computer. Not sure if you can see any of that, but uh, it's a laptop. We've stuck it to the chart table with double-sided tape. On the um, laptop, we run OpenCPN with CMAP 93 charts. Um, I've got an old phone up here which we run the um, Anchor Watch software on it. And at the helm, we have a, a large iPad running um, Navionics. But uh, on my iPad, I actually run um, iSailor. I prefer the graphics of iSailor. Anyway. This is about a heater, not about a navigation. All right, come back in a minute. Okay, just recapping. The uh, original heater in this boat is an Ebus Batcher, um, equivalent to this Chinese copy here. It's probably been in the boat, uh, I think, 20 years. We've had the boat 10 years, and um, we would put in, we'd run it for an hour or two in the morning at the beginning and end of the season. So we probably put in, oh, I don't know, say 50 hours in the beginning of the season, running it for a couple of weeks and probably a bit less maybe this, at the end of the season. So we probably, on average, we would put 100 hours a year on this heater, on our heater. Now we've had it for 10 years. So we've also had two seasons where we've went it over and we would have used it much more. So I would estimate we put 1,500 hours on that um, Ebus Batcher heater and I have never ever had to service it until last year when it stopped working and this year I came to just swap it over all the all the fittings are the same you just swap the one out and put the other one in I could have used the same exhaust the same intake um, I would have had to run the, the separate control wiring but when I was taking it out at the beginning of the season I noticed a corroded wire and just for curiosity's sake, I clipped the corrosion out, um, put a new fitting on the end and hooked it up again and the heater worked. So the swap out has been postponed. But the principles are the same. So if you follow those principles of the install in a boat, you won't go wrong. But if you do it right, you have um, no restrictions, you have good installation and you operate it right, um, give it a boost run when you turn it off or every couple of days give it a boost run to burn out any carbon you'll have very little trouble with these heaters oh g'day the um, video you've just seen is what I took in the med um, when I was sailing around there recently I'm back home now and I'll just go through some of the things a little bit more detail about setting up one of these little diesel heaters in in your boat now as I mentioned in the video past is that you try and mount the heater fore and aft because they can tolerate the roll much better than they can tolerate pitch and particularly in the keel boat that's going to be sailing on its side you you need to mount them close to the the center line as possible and fore and aft now if it sails like this the heater will still work but if it sails like this then the heater is going to get, create issues which you if it's in a, a power boat or a, a multi-hull, then these issues are not so critical because they sail fairly flat. Okay, setting it up, as you saw in that video, um, it, they come with a bracket here, but when you set it up, this, this mounts on the bottom of the heater, but you'll need a, an L bracket to go if you're going onto a bulkhead or something like that. So when the heater's mounted on here, so if you put some rubber mounts, and you can buy these at a hardware store, you know, they're, they're fairly cheap. They, you know, rubber bumpers for door stops and things like that. You mount them here, and that will take out a lot of the, the vibration out of the hull itself. So probably the, the, once you've set that up, it's pretty simple. And I think from the, the past videos that you'll see, it's, it's, it's basically very simple to set up in a boat. Okay, what I'd like to do now is just go through the, um, the different systems um, one by one and just give you a little bit more detail. The um, first thing you'll need to do is get yourself a standpipe or a pickup tube. These are available on eBay at quite cheap. Um, they come with a long length that's just bent over here. You mount this in the fuel tank. One important point to remember is you cut it off an inch or two higher than the, um, the, the pickup for your, for your main engine. You don't want to be able to run in your heater and run all the diesel out and then not be able to start the engine. I would then use just normal fuel hose. 
I, I wouldn't go to the, you know, all the different joiners to go to the hard nylon. So from here I just use the normal fuel hose and it goes from there. From, from there you really need to go through a, an on off tap and you can just get a little normal ball valve on off tap. From the on off tap it goes through your filter and from the filter it goes through to your pump. So that would be, in, if I was doing it, that would be just normal fuel hose I would use. Now, from the pump, it then goes to your, your heater. So the fuel line from there to the heater, it depends. If it's, if it's only a short run, then you can probably just use the normal fuel hose. But if it's a long run, then you have to go and use the, um, the hard nylon tube. On my boat, I've got normal fuel hose going to the pump and then from there I've got the, the hard nylon tube going to the heater because it's about or about a five meter run from the um, from the pump to the heater itself. In parts where it goes beside the hull I've got some larger fuel hose and I've just put it over the top of here just slid it in um, nice loose fit so it takes the pulsing so these pulse so I've taken the pulsing out from hitting the hull itself now, if you go through a machinery space or the engine room, then you have to use copper pipe. You have to use metal. Now, normally copper, but it can be stainless steel. You cannot use a flammable fuel hose for the heat if it's running through an engine room or the machinery space. Okay, um, with the, the pump, they, the Chinese ones come with these. Um, in the boat, I've got a spider set up you can buy them from Ebus Batcher as a, um, a spare part but they're, they're quite expensive and you could you could make one up yourself I think uh, without um, without much effort so that's the spider one down down there but lots of money I, I would make one myself or just use this one because these are, these are pretty good as well to take out the vibration and the pulsing from the pump. All right, that's the, um, the fuel system. I'll come back in a minute with the exhaust. Okay, with the exhaust, the uh, first thing you have to acquire is um, a right angle bend with a water trap. So you can buy these on eBay they're probably I don't know about a hundred dollars or something like that or you could you might be able to get a local fabricator to to make you one so what you have to do is you have to um, have a water trap to, for the condensation to come down to the bottom of the um, uh, the bottom of the, the heater now you can get it like this one here which is a normal elbow but if you have a, a loops in it whichever the lowest pipe you have to get one made up so you'll make up one like this and then you drain out the bottom here so you have to have this drain the condensation drain now it's normally four coils of copper and it like it acts like a um a water trap that you have in the toilet or or the sink so it what they do is they stop the bad sewage smells coming back up into the uh from the toilet or back up into your, your sink in the heater, it's operating the opposite way. It stops the exhaust gas coming out into the boat. So that's the first thing you have to do. You have to have yourself a condensation drain with a water trap in the bottom of it. Now, from there, the normal you have the normal exhaust pipe. So the next critical thing that you need to do is that you have to have proper exhaust fittings. Now, the stainless steel clamps are not suitable for in a boat. They need to be proper tight stainless steel exhaust clamps and you probably you need the exhaust um, gasket cement to make it absolutely airtight. From there you have a muffler. Now the mufflers that come in the kit like these are just not suitable. First up they have a drain hole in the bottom of them to allow the, the moisture out and secondly they're just spot welded around so there's three welds there, a couple of welds here on the bottom the gas will come and leak out here. So unless you get one of these and you, you get it completely welded up, um, these are not suitable. Now, you can, you can buy um, these mufflers from eBay as well. 
So there's a company, that, oh, what do they call themselves? Um, Butler Technic or something. They sell a lot of them. So they come with a gas type, a gas type exhaust muffler. This one here comes with probably, I think it's nearly two meters of exhaust hose. There's a lot of supplies. When you um, do your search, search for exhaust hose or marine exhaust hose or marine muffler for Ebus Batcher or Wabasto. So remember these heaters here are copied off the, the Ebus Batcher. So do the search for, um, put in Wabasto or Ebus Batcher and marine in your exhaust and you'll find these, these particular items. But there's quite a, quite a few, they'll come up everywhere, all the different marine applications from them. Okay, the, the next thing with your exhaust is when you bring it up, you have to put a loop over the top before it comes out of the hull. So any, any um, um, water that hits the side of the hull is not going to come up and drain back down through your exhaust. So you have a loop up and then you have the outlet. Now, you'll have to get yourself a proper exhaust outlet. Now, it's something like this. It's, it's air cooled, so it's got a it's nice stainless steel. It's got a, an air gap around here which is this part here, this part goes through the hull and this connects here into the exhaust pipe. So you need to get one of these. Um, they're not cheap either, but as I said here, what, you know, $100 or something like that. You can also buy them on, um, on eBay. Right. Next thing is the, um, the hot air. Now, as you saw in the, um, the video past, we just pull ours from the lazarette. But what we've got in the lazarette, it's vented to the outside. So we've got um, two 75 millimeter, three inch, three inch vents that come up into the, from the lazarette into the cockpit. So they're water, water type vents, so we, we're sucking nice air. Ideally, you want one either side of the cockpit and then when the heat is not running you get the nice ventilation come through. Um, you could get by with just one because when the heat is working it'll, it'll suck it in anyway. Now one of the great advantages of these little heaters over a gas heater or something like that is that they provide very very dry heat and give you lovely ventilation in the boat. The gas heaters create huge amounts of moisture by their operation and put a, loads of uh, condensation throughout your boat. So. These little diesel heaters are absolutely fantastic in a boat. On the outlet side, um, you can run quite a long distance on the outlet side and then have different, different vents coming off them. Um, we've just got two vents. We've got one into the cabin and one into the saloon. Now, it's vitally important that with your outlet side, you must have one vent that cannot be shut off. So some of the vents you can shut off so you stop the hot air coming out but you not, must need one that you cannot shut off, so always going to have hot air because if somebody cuts them off, both of them, or, then what you're having is then you're going to overheat the heater because there's, there's no way that it can come out, the hot air can get out. Um, right, the, the next thing is the, um, probably that you, you really need to do is if you're going to install one, buy yourself a little one of these instant um, carbon monoxide detectors. They're about $40, but in an application like that, you really have to have one of those for, your, for doing all your testing. And you can run this along the exhaust pipe, um, run along where you've got the joints to see if you've got any leaks through your exhaust. Um, run along here to see that you've got any leaks or not this muffler, but a proper muffler. You can run along all to see that there's no leaks. And the next thing, put yourself, put install a proper carbon monoxide detector in the boat. So this is very important. If you're going to put one of these heaters in, and even if you've got, um, you know, a gas stove or something like that, it's always good to have one of these carbon monoxide detectors. They're, they're not expensive, um, and it's a life-saving thing. The other issue too that you, you must have is you must have one vent in the boat that can't be shut off. Now it's a requirement in Australia and, and many other countries that there must be ventilation into the, into the boat that can't be closed. So in other words, you can shut down all the hatches but there must be a, a door aid type vent that cannot be shut down. And uh, so there's always going to be some ventilation in the boat. 
Right, last up is the controllers. Um, yeah, you can use the controller that it comes with. You can get these um, these fancy little controllers, these LED sort of controllers that um, have all the bells and whistles. But I tend to prefer this simple type of controller. Um, it's it's got a a, um, a sensor in a temperature sensor in the top here, so. Once the temperature is set, it will run, but it's so nice to just, just turn the knob and you can set a temperature. One issue that you have with these is that they're a bit complex for people to use, um, but they're excellent. They'll tell you a whole lot of parameters. But if using one of these, I like to use them on manual setting because what they'll do is they'll roar. To, they'll put the heater on absolutely flat chat to try and bring the heater up quickly so you'll have the, the heater roaring away to get the, um, the temperature in the boat or the motorhome up to temperature and uh, before they cut down whereas it's often better to just put it on a lower setting and bring the temperature up quietly and slowly but it's, it, this is personal thing it's all up to you you know which way you people want to do it all right guys um, oh I forgot the other thing on the intake side um, our intake side is, is just in the boat itself. I think it's important to put a filter in. A lot of them don't have a filter, um, but if you've got any bugs or anything like that, hopefully you've got no bugs in your boat, but what you don't want to do is you don't want to be sucking these up. Um, and, uh, you know, we've had geckos in the boat sometimes. Um, heaven forbid we even had cockroaches once around the, around the um, in one area there we got from a cardboard box. but. We got rid of them pretty quickly, but but you don't want these things sucked up into the into the heater itself. So put a little filter on. All right, I hope that gives you a little bit of basic knowledge. If you're going to install one of these heaters in your boat, they are excellent. I can tell you that they are excellent. They give you this lovely, dry, warm heat, and um, you know, particularly in the shoulder seasons, the beginning of the season when it's quite cold, when we go over there, we go over in April, which is still coming off winter in, in uh, the Mediterranean. And if we sail in the shoulder season back in October, November, um, it's also quite cold at night. And these little heaters give you lovely warmth in the boat. All right, guys, I hope that's some help to you and um, we'll catch you another time.